What's going on everyone? This is Brennan from The Trading Fraternity and today's video I'm going to be going more in depth on the option page in Thinkorswim and show you my option chain setup that I actually use on a daily basis. Uh, this tutorial is actually requested by one of the citizens in the chat room after they watched my basic setup for Thinkorswim. So if you guys haven't seen that yet and just want a brief walkthrough on TOS, go ahead and check that out. You'll find it in our tutorial section. And as you can see on my screen today, I'm going to be walking through on a brand new paper trading setup. So you new guys can do this with me, okay? So uh, let's get things going here. <clears throat> Obviously, you see that I'm on the trade page in all products, and this is where you're going to find your options, okay? So I already have a stock typed in. I have Facebook. You can type in whatever you want. And I'm just going to go through the top to the bottom here, okay? And I'll just work my way down. So let's get started with the underline here. Underline is information that's on the underlying stock. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? So we have the last transaction. We have the net change. You got the bid and the ask. You got the size of the bid and the ask. You got the volume, which is how many shares that went in on the actual stock throughout the day. You have the opening price, high a day, and the low a day. So that's actually really nice to have right here while you're looking through your option chain so you can keep an eye on the stock itself. Personally, I like to use the next section, which is the trade grid right here, because I like to actually have an actual chart up of the stock. So what I do is since Facebook here, I have it synced to red, I'm going to sync this chart to red also. So let me do that. And as you can see, it comes up with a level two. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this by hitting the symbols action right here. Have a little drop down, go to gadget, and we're going to go to chart right here. And as you can see, I have a one-year chart that pops up for the time frame. I'm going to change this to one day, five minute. That's just my preference right here. So now I'm able to keep an eye on the stock while I'm taking a look at the option chain. What else I like to do, I like to create a chart for my actual options that I'm looking at. So to do that, I'm going to change this one right here, the symbol link to Lalak, which is at the bottom here, okay? And as you can see, it gives me a level two again. What I'm going to do... Click the settings again and go to gadget and chart. And it looks like I have an option already preloaded. So what I'm going to do is just take this backspace, enter. All right. So we're finally at the option chain here. Um, I'm actually just going to go right through here from the beginning to end. Um, as you can see on the left side here, each uh, contract shows a date. And if you guys don't know about options yet, every contract expires on Fridays, the typical ones. Uh, there are SPYs and there are the SPXs that do have like the monthly, con not the monthly, the Monday contracts and the Wednesday contracts. But the typical options, they expire on Fridays. And you can always check the date on these by looking right here. And you can always look at the, the parentheses on these, um, on the numbers for each contract, if that makes sense. So you see there's three days to expiration, 10 days, 17 days, 24, so on and so forth right there. So that is pretty useful. So it gives you a little, basically a little timer of when these contracts expire. Now, as you can see, these contracts are actually color coordinated. The white ones are your traditional monthly contracts and the yellow ones are your weekly contracts. So typically I like to stick with the monthly ones or at least 30 days when it comes to trading my options, okay? Um, let's open one of these guys up, okay? So I'm gonna open up the monthly for October. And as you can see, it only opens up four contracts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up just a little bit more and you can click the strikes right here, the drop down, do whatever you want. Like I said, in the TOS video, I like to do 20 to 40. So let me just type that in. All right, cool. So it's uploaded right now. And let's just go through the chain here. Um, as you see, as I click the October monthlies, it shows the date and here's the strikes right here. So it shows from 19 to 38. Obviously I have 20 strikes open. Um, the left side is your calls and you can always check on the left side. It has calls right here. The right side is your puts right there. And the purple is in your money, in the money, not in your money, but, and the black ones are out of the money. And you can see on the put side also in the money, it's purple, black is out of the money. <clears throat> and you can see the, what's it called the, in the money contracts hold the most value because you can actually exercise those for a hundred shares. Compared to the ones that are out of the money, they are going to be cheaper because you're putting on more risk of those actually expiring worthless. So to move on here, you can see my chain itself is pretty bland here when you first get your think or swim. And all it shows is your bid and your ask, your net change, and your last transaction. 
I'm going to actually give you my setup. I actually wrote it on my whiteboard here. So let me just go down the list for you. And if you guys want to change this, you click the layout right here. Go to customize. All right, so that pops up for me. So the first one I do, I actually use net change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the last transaction down here. And the next one I like to use is volume. The one after that, I like to use open interest. And what I do, the next one is actually the last trans transaction, which is last X. So what I do is just drag it down here. The one after that, I like to use the mark. And if you guys aren't familiar with this, I am gonna be explaining this in just a second. So the last two is Delta. And Theta. So whenever you get your list of uh, what you want on your chain, and you don't have to necessarily use mine, you can do whatever you want. There's always a huge list. There's always different ones to pick from, okay? So after you want your list, you push okay. It's gonna update your chain here. And so there we go. So I'm just gonna go down, go down the list of why I choose what I have on my chain. So the net change, I like to use this actually over percentage change because as you know, in options, they're extremely volatile. So you it's pretty normal to see between 50 to 100% differences. And it could be kind of blinding for me, it is at least. So I like to concentrate on net change because I'm able to concentrate on the actual value of the contract itself. Um, so moving on from that, I, the volume here, as you can see, is just like the underlying up here. You saw the underlying, the volume up here is how many shares that went in on the underlying stock. You can see how many, how much contracts went through on the volume throughout the day. So that's pretty cool. I, I use it in part of my training, uh, not training, but trading to actually see what is, uh, going on. As you can see right now for today. The 130s were pretty popular out of the strikes right there. So that can just show you if there's a demand or not. Uh, the next one is open interest. Kind of like volume, open interest, it shows you how many contracts that people actually own it right now. So the open interest on these 130s is 47,000, close to about 48,000 right there. So that's over time right now. That's how many contracts that people are holding. And... Obviously, we're going to see 10,000 more. You just got to check the open interest tomorrow to see if these are added to it or not. So to move on is last transaction. Um, for me, I like to get cheaper options than the last person that bought in front of me. So that's what I actually like to have beforehand. Um, mark right here. It's a pretty important part of my trading. It is the halfway point between your bid and your ask. So you have 13 cent to 18 cents right there. So the halfway point between these two is going to be 16 cents, about 17 cents right there, really. But it's the halfway point. So what I like to do when I limit, and like I, I fish out limit orders when I buy my contract. So I'm going to just show you. I'll buy a contract. So I click the ask. And if I want to buy this, I'm going to get close to the mark right here. So obviously these this is a tight spread. So this is kind of a bad example. But I'll fish it between like 16 to 18. So I would send an order for 17 cents. And you know what? I'll actually just pull up a better stock than this. I'm going to do like a wider one, like Google's prime example. All right. So I'm going to be looking at the 825s here. They're $2 a contract, about 245 to 265 So I'm going to click this right here. And if I want to get in between the spread here, when I want to limit my... I mean, when I want to fish my limit orders out there, I look at the mark, which is $2.54, maybe $2.55 if you're going to be rounding up. So what I do is I adjust it to $2.55. I might even fish it out for $2.60 right there if I'm being generous to the market maker because that's part of my trading style. I like to haggle with the market maker and try to actually get discounts. So moving on from this. The next part is the Greeks right here, which is I only use the delta. Um, so which delta means when it comes to options is per dollar move, like the gain or loss. So looking at these 825s here. So if the underlying stock of Google goes up a dollar, the contract is going to gain 23 cents, which is $23 on the actual contract. And if it goes down a dollar, it's going to lose 23 cents. 
So, and as you can see, as it gets closer to being in the money, the delta goes up because it shows more value and all that. Like, just like how I said, when it came to the contracts that are in the money, they hold the most value because they're able to be exercised for 100 shares. So, um, if you guys are not familiar with the Greeks, we are creating a tutorial on that. So, look out for that soon, okay? And the next Greek that I use on my chain is Theta, which is time decay, which is very important part here. As you look at the contracts, they all do expire at some point. So, these have 10 days till expiration. So, I want to calculate how much is this contract going to lose over time? So obviously it shows 27 cents. So that's always something to keep an eye on, especially if you're building swing trades, or even if you're going to be looking at, you know, your weeklies, you know, if you have a contract during this time right here, you have to kind of play hot potato here because it's about to expire worthless out of the monies. And as you can see, the 825s here on this one is definitely a lot cheaper See the 75 cents compared to the, about a week out, which is $2.65. So that pretty much wraps up the option chain setup for what I have. Like I said, you guys can do whatever you want. This is just what I use on a daily basis, and it helps me out. So let me just close these up here, and we'll move on. Just like in the basic setup video, I went over to statistics here. This is where you're able to see the volume on the day for calls and puts. Right there, you can compare it. So on the for Google today, 17,000 went in on the calls. 14,000 went in on the puts. You can actually see the statistics-wise to see how much was traded on the bid or below. The ask or above between the market. And you can always calculate the deltas right here and look at your IV, which is your implied volatility. Um, you got your VWAP right there also. And you have your sizzle indexes, which I don't typically use itself because I concentrate more on the stock movement than anything. Oh, I forgot to go over uh, looking at an actual chart for your option. So let me open back the monthlies here. So obviously we made a chart up here earlier to look at options. And if I want to do that, if I want to look at the actual chart for the day, I right click it and I go to send. You see the contract down here. Send to Lalock. And boom, right there. I'm not sure what time frame this is, but I'm going to do the one day five minutes. So I'm able to see how much, like pretty much the contract fluctuated throughout the day when it comes to transactions. And you can always expand this to a different time frame. Five day, five minute. So you see for the five day low for these contracts are $1.10. They're about, you know, as if you look at the market, they're about $2.55. So that's, they're pretty much up on the day, but you have to, like I said, you have to compare it on the actual underlying stock to see what has happened. So <clears throat> to move on from this, we were at the statistics. I'm going to go to option time and sales, which is personally my favorite part when it comes to analyzing option orders that I actually see on Twitter throughout the day. So I follow speedy calls. I follow Wall Street Jesus, I follow Options Hawk, all basically all the option guys on Twitter and you know the ones that spit out option data and I actually like to go through the actual transactions throughout the day here and that's the cool part because you see every single option transaction from the beginning to close whether if it's a call, put and all that. And if you guys want to actually filter the contracts itself, you can just click right here, the filter button. And you can do it by series, strikes, whatever strike you're looking at, whatever time frame you're looking at. It's all good to go, even quantity if you wanted to do. And if you want to look at the biggest transactions throughout the day, they are right here. Obviously, we see on the calls, the biggest transaction was the October 790 calls, 100 lot for $20. So that's a big order right there. And of course, on the puts also. So let me just close this up. I am creating a tutorial. I don't want to keep plugging myself when it, come, when it comes to these tutorials, but I am actually creating a t tutorial on analyzing option orders pretty soon. So look out for that also. So let me close this up. Last but not least, product depth. So this gives you a visual of what's going on in the option chain. So obviously when I have this, it shows your implied volatility. Personally, I like to use either open interest or volume. So I usually use volume because it gives me a visual of what is the action going on. And it, you can see whatever is popping out. See, if you hover over it, <clears throat> the Oct October 820s had the most volume for the day for the call activity. On the put side, the October 800s. So that just gives me a visual right there. 
So to pretty much wrap everything up here, this is basically my setup and hopefully this guy has helped you out. Um, like I've been telling everyone in the chat room, please tell me what you guys want to do when it comes to tutorials. I'm more than glad to actually make it for you guys and that pretty, that's pretty much it. So it's just to wrap things up. You guys have a great night. Okay. Take care.